The FIA has announced that it's going to take steps to try and avoid a repeat of what happened at the end of yesterday's race in Baku, where journalists, photographers and other personnel were spilling into the pit lane to get ready for the post-race celebrations and photo opportunities. The problem is, as they were doing this, Esteban Ocon's Alpine was heading into the pit lane at close to 200 miles an hour. Ocon and by extension Hulkenberg had not made a single pit stop during the course of the race. Both drivers, it seemed, were trying to play to the statistics of Baku having red flags and safety cars late on in the race to try and get a free pit stop, since, you know, you can swap tyres and do a red flag. Since their gamble didn't pay off, they had to try and copy Michael Schumacher's 1998 British Grand Prix Pro Gamer move. Ocon came flying into the pit lane, got the limiter on, and then had all these people diving out of the way as nobody was expecting him to come in. Now in this era of Formula 1, it's supposedly all fine. The cars have speed limiters. It's not like the days pre-1994 when cars racing at Monza could easily be entering the pit lane at over 200 miles an hour. These days, there's a 50 mile an hour speed limit in virtually every pit lane on the calendar, with the exception of Monaco and any changes the FIA can make before a race weekend. See, last year or a couple of years ago, whenever it was, when they reduced the Paul Ricard pit lane speed limit down to about 40 or whatever it was. And since F1 cars have insanely good brakes, an F1 car can stop on a sixpence from 50 miles an hour, but while an F1 driver's reactions are good, they're not instant. Plus, hitting someone at 50 miles an hour, irrespective of what car it is, you know, a Ford Focus, a Nissan Micra, or even a Renault Espace that has a Euro NCAP 5 star safety rating, is going to cause some damage. An F1 car is going to do the same. It's like that old advert that was on TV about 15 years ago with the kid going, if you hit me at 30, there's an 80% chance I'll live. Hit me at 40, there's an 80% chance I'll die. And the whole thing goes in reverse as this mangled kid gets put back together. Now obviously, nothing happened. Everyone walked away unharmed and Ocon was understandably a bit miffed at the situation. And it probably wouldn't be so bad if Formula 1 hadn't already had close encounters with people getting close to the track that shouldn't be close to the track. There's been a few in the last month before this, across many forms of motorsport. At last year's British Grand Prix, following the Turn 1 accident involving Russell, Zhu and Albon, some climate change protesters were able to breach the security perimeter and make it onto the track. Now thankfully the red flags had been called and the track was neutralised so any cars still on track were going slowly and the protesters were off on the left hand side of the track away from the racing line so there was enough time and space to get rid of them. Makes you wonder what would have happened if that turn one incident hadn't happened. He's a good bloke that George. But anyway, just this year there were five or six fans who managed to get onto the track early towards the end of the Australian Grand Prix. Authorities in Victoria are looking into this and those individuals will get what whatever they get, I guess. This caused a few eyebrows to be raised because it's 2023. That shouldn't really be happening. And to be fair, to go back to the British Grand Prix last year, it's 2022. That really shouldn't be happening. However, there have been two other incidents at FIA events in the last month as well, outside of Formula 1. At the Formula E race in Berlin last weekend, protesters managed to scale the catch fencing at the circuit just prior to the start of the race and get onto the track, causing disruption. I'd like to show you the footage, but you know how it is. If there's one thing these places are super cool with, it's using footage, so I'll put links to any relevant clips in the description and you can watch them all individually. Yeah, sorry about that. But anyway, that caused some disruption, but like at Silverstone, it happened when things weren't at full throttle, so it was easily mopped up and the race went ahead. The other event this has happened at is the recent Rally Croatia in the WRC when protesters tried to get onto the course and sit there as the event was going on. Marshals and other members of the crowd were able to retrieve them from the course before a car came flying through at speed, which again makes you wonder what would have happened if things had gone a different way. And all of this happening not long after Craig Breen was killed in an accident in preparation for that very same rally. And there have been accidents where cars have hit spectators, but they've been exactly that. Accidents. Carlos Sainz in the 2001 RAC rally hitting some spectators, the accidents in Group B, and so on. Now, at a rally, it's quite open. It's too open to close off everything, but on a closed circuit, you've got way more control. Now, the Baku incident is a little different to the security breaches, I admit, but it's yet another time the FIA has come under the microscope for a hang on, how can this be allowed to happen moment? Because the FIA has admitted that doing what it is doing was not unusual and happened quite often, probably because nobody's ever expecting a car to be pitting on the last lap of a Grand Prix. Alex Albon did it in Australia last year and a similar thing was going on, but the FIA didn't think it was necessary to go, hmm, that's a lot of people milling around while a race is still happening. 
Ted Kravitz was down there and he said, Normally we get to the end of the race and we normally get to the point where everybody knows that everybody has made their pit stops so we're probably not going to get any more pit stops. Though that doesn't mean there won't be. The Parc Ferme barriers come out and official photographers are released by the FIA and local marshals through an access gate so people can get into position and get ready. There is also a tower so people can get an elevation above people's heads to get the celebration shots of the podium. That's what normally happens. It doesn't mean that there can't be pit stops on the last lap. What was unusual about today is that everybody who was paying attention knew that there was guaranteed to be one last pit stop with Esteban Ocon. I was down in the gap where team guests are let in, which is not the same as where the photographers, TV crews and people from the FIA let people in. The team guest garage was down between Alpine and McLaren and we were all completely aware, not least because I reminded security that there was still a pit stop to happen. These were FIA sanctioned photographers and that's why the FIA person in charge of this Parc Ferme arrangement has been summoned to see the stewards. It's effectively the FIA investigating themselves. The lesson needs to be learned about when they can let people in for pure safety's sake. F1 had a bit of a lucky escape today. They must have assumed it's a one-off, but at the same time you can't expect every conceivable scenario to be in the front of people's minds. The FIA is now investigating and is likely to change protocols for this, even if it does feel like they're marking their own homework. I guess it hits that little bit harder given that this race was 29 years to the day that Roland Ratzenberger was killed. Most likely what the FIA will do is just change things so that nobody's allowed into the pits until the last runner has crossed the line. You'd hope that whoever allowed those people into the pit lane at that time is going to get quite the telling off. And like I said, it's impossible to account for every situation. It just sucks that it has to be something like this for someone to go, yeah, okay, this isn't right. You only have to look at the Tom Price incident to show that human beings being hit by racing cars isn't something you want to see especially live in high definition. It just seems that with the recent security breaches and this incident as well that race organisers and the FIA have become a little bit lax. It's been written that the 1994 season was what happens when complacency can lead to disaster, which is ironic given that the race yesterday happened 29 years to the day after Roland Ratzenberger was killed. In 1996, there was a track invasion following the San Marino Grand Prix and Max Mosley fined the race organisers a million dollars for the privilege. There's also the guy that ran onto the track at Silverstone in 2003, an incident that made Bernie and Mosley put Silverstone on borrowed time if it ever wanted to keep its place on the calendar. There's also the ex-Mercedes employee running onto the track at Hockenheim in 2000. That incident basically condemned that version of the circuit to the history books. And there's the times where Schumacher won at Monza and he'd be trying to do his cooldown lap with hundreds if not thousands of jubilant tifosi running onto the track and trying to get close to their beloved Scarlet Ferrari. But you look at those events and think, God, that was a different time back then, wasn't it? Would never happen now. Yeah, about that. I hope that now the FIA and race organisers will start to take action on this. So then, a look at the Baku near miss and how it ties in with all the other near misses in the last 12 months. If this has given you food for thought, then do give the video a like, and for more stuff like this, get subscribed with the bell on, so you never miss out on a future video. Massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at Patreon, and if you want to help support the channel at a more personal level, you can join the people on your screen by following the link in the description, where there's also links to Discord, socials, and my F1 store affiliate. Well, there's super thanks if you just want to top up my coffee cup. So until next time, I've been Aidan Millward, have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.